Aloha, welcome to the Travel Brain Trust. This is a travel series for experienced travelers with a love of discovery and adventure who appreciate elevated experiences, exclusive access and insider information. I'm Martha Rhodes and I'm here with Mimi Lichtenstein, my co-host, and we are luxury travel advisors and we are bringing you our favorite travel experts from around the world every other week on this webcast series. Today we have Lindsay with us from Andaz Maui. And we're going to talk about, hi Lindsay. We're going to talk about Hawaii. What makes it so special? Why would you go all that way just for a beach vacation? Uh, we'll share what we love about Hawaii and especially Maui, the Magic Isle. And then we'll wrap up with some how to's on how to make Hawaii happen within the pandemic. They've recently provided an exemption for their 14 day quarantine. So I'll go over all those procedures for that. Thank you, Martha. Hi, Lindsay. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha, ladies. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. Absolutely. We're excited you're here. I think we all might think that it would be better if we were all meeting up in Maui to have this discussion, <laughs> but hey, it's not going to happen. Um, perhaps we could start by just giving us a little bit of insight about your background related to Maui and what it is that you love um, about the island. You got it. Well, you know, I've I've been in hotel sales for a very long time, um, mostly selling ski, and I started traveling to Hawaii, as most do, for fun. Um, and I you know, was on my first trip to the Big Island, and by the time I left, I just remember being on the plane and being in tears. I just did not want to leave. Um, it really, really pulled on my heartstrings in a way that I can't describe. So I was like, I'm in hotel sales. I'm, I can sell wherever I want. <laughs> so um, now I have been you know, working for various properties currently um, on Das Maui at Wailea Resort and Hyatt's brand new acquisition, the Hana Maui Resort. Um, now I've been working there for about seven or eight years in Hawaii overall. So I just love it. I just love it. I think it's a perfect example of when you find your career path and something that you love and they intersect, you are a lucky person. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. It gives me a good excuse to go back quite frequently. So yeah. <laughs> can't complain. Hawaii is so special and they call the Aloha spirit. And once you have been once and you kind of experience that peacefulness and kindness and friendliness, it's, it is a very special place. And I think I sometimes have people say, why, well, you know, I'm so, live to close to the Caribbean. Um, why would I go all the way to Hawaii? And it is just yeah. so different and so special. The culture is so rich and um, yes. so many reasons to go. And you, like you said, people go back. You're, you're really hitting on it. That Aloha spirit is in every single thing that they do. It's in the way that I, you know, interact with my colleagues. Um, and you feel that right when you get there. And I mean, that's the reason you go to Hawaii. It's number one, you have that safety factor. It's, you know, it's here in the country. Um, but you get that feeling like you're in an international destination because of the culture. So um, it's really special. That's right. Well, I'll give a little overview for everyone. So Hawaii, um, the state is made up of 132 islands. Actually, only seven are inhabited. And there are five that are our primary destinations for tourism. Um, and those are Oahu, the heart of Hawaii. That is where uh, Honolulu is, Waikiki Beach, Pearl Harbor, top highlights there. The island of Hawaii is actually also called the Big Island. You can see on the map, it is the biggest. Um, it is known to have its active volcanoes. Right now, I don't think there's any lava flowing, but often there is flowing lava, and that's a big highlight. People love seeing that, either by boat as it falls into the ocean or by helicopter. Um, Hawaii has a very well-known um, astronomical observatory, and they protect their dark sky. So if you're into mm -hmm. astronomy, it's a wonderful choice. Um, yeah. Kauai is the garden isle. That's the island with the most spectacular scenery that you've seen in many, many movies, including Jurassic Park. And that's an island where you can take a movie set kind of tour to see those um, iconic scenery like the Napali Coast and Waimea Canyon. 
Um, and then Lanai is a very small island. It's got one big luxury, well, I think a second one now, luxury resorts, both operated by Four Seasons. It's got rugged terrain, there's wonderful mm -hmm. golf, people love to do four wheel drive exploring there. Um, and then there's Maui, which is our highlight today, also called the Magic Isle. Um, I like to recommend Maui as a first stop, and Lindsay, you can add a few points here, but uh, as a first island to visit for people, um, because it just seems to have a little bit of everything that's great about Hawaii. Beautiful beaches, quaint little towns, rural areas with beautiful like um, lavender fields and pineapple plantations and these beautiful yes. valleys and waterfalls and volcanoes and yeah. All you can even go out to the surfing goat dairy farm if you want to. And <laughs> there's all these really wonderful little kind of hidden gems on Maui. But I think you're hitting the nail on the head. It's really kind of the most well-rounded island. And it really is quintessential Hawaii um, is kind of what I like to say. Because you don't have that hustle bustle crowdedness that you're going to mm -hmm. see city life that you're going to see in Oahu. Um, but we also don't roll up the sidewalks at night like you do kind of in Kauai. It's definitely, you know, Kauai is very quiet, um, which is incredible as well. But I really love how Maui, you know, has all that you are going to want if you're going to Hawaii. You have the waterfalls and all the incredible water sports and um, these beautiful island peaks that you can go and explore. Um, but you can also do some great shopping. Um, you have incredible, incredible like celebrity chef driven restaurants um, and some great bars and kind of nightlife too. So there's really kind of something for everyone there. I think there's no reason not to go to Maui, I guess, is the point of this conversation. Uh, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, I, I, just pulled up, I just pulled up the blown up map of Maui. And perhaps, um, Lindsay, you can walk us through kind of the different areas. I know that the two main resort sort of luxury resort areas are focused um, on the west side of the island. And then there's some other areas around. So could you walk us through the different parts of the island? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So really there's going to be three main areas where guests are going to look at staying. I think that's probably the number one thing you're looking at when you're um, you know, heading out to Maui. So everybody's very familiar with the name Kanapali, Um, and rightfully so. It is the most kind of touristy area um, on the island. That is going to be, you know, where you've got just kind of rows and rows and rows of um, hotels, taller buildings, um, things like that. It is going to be where you're going to find the most um, cost-effective lodging on the island um, for the most part. Um, but when you're looking at a more high level kind of luxury experience for your stay, um, the other two areas you really want to consider are Kapalua and Wailea. Mm -hmm. um, Kapalua, you can kind of see there where she's pointing her mouse is, is still on technically the west side um, of Maui. Um, Kapalua is going to be home to the Ritz, um, to Montage as a couple top partners out there. Um, it is a little bit more remote. So I always say you're going to want to have a car if you're out there because you're going to want to drive into areas like Lahaina where you have the nightlife, the restaurants, the shops and stuff like that. There's not a whole lot out there in Kapalua itself. Um, Wailea, really yeah, cut it. Really, it's a really nice area for residential stays. Yes. Um, often see repeat visitors staying in Kapalua. They kind of going to stay in one place and not necessarily the first time visitor that's doing a lot of driving around and touring. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. Um, you know, once you've already kind of seen the island, you've been there, done that, um, and really you're just going to kind of relax and kick back a little bit more. Um, staying up there is incredible. I also personally love going to explore that side of the island because you have places like Honolulu Bay um, and Kapalua Bay, which have some of the best snorkeling on the entire island. So um, really a beautiful spot up there. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, when you're coming to Maui as a first timer, um, you know, I have a real soft spot for Wailea. That's where Andaz is located. Um, 
it's definitely where you're going to find some of the most high-end lodging um, on Maui. Um, you have the Wailea Beach Walk, which is a five-mile stretch of kind of coastal pathway that really does connect all the different resorts. So you don't necessarily need a car when you're there. Um, you know, you have all the shops and restaurants and things like that right at your fingertips. Um, but it's not as touristy. It's definitely going to be a more kind of quality experience there. So, yeah. I'm going to, maybe we're going to dive in next to some of our favorite hotels, which will take me a second to figure out where, the, how do I get that up there? There we go. Awesome. <laughs> Good job. It works. <laughs> that one's so nice when that happens. Um, anyway, so we put this together just to give a little bit of an overview. There's obviously different priorities people have when they're traveling, whether you're going with kids or adults, you want something romantic, you want something with a kitchen. Um, so I thought it would be fun to look at a chart that gives us an idea a little more quantitatively how some of these resorts compare. And obviously there's so many qualitative factors that go into it that aren't on this spreadsheet, but um, this is like a good first way to, to look at them. Um, at the top of the list, you'll see Kapalua, um, which has the Montage and the Ritz. Those are our two big partners. And if you look at that, what jumps out to me immediately is that the Montage has 50 rooms and the Ritz has 463. There are some like residential type area to montage so it is a little bigger than 50 but it's just a much smaller more intimate property um, and then just to walk you through what those different icons mean at the top that next one over vision and the one after that with the little cocktail glass is actually for swim up bars because as Lindsay and Martha know I'm always looking <laughs> for a great swim up bar and the next one is how many pools they have and then whether or not they have a kids club, they all do, a little different on the pricing. And then a spa, happily every one of these has a spa. And the last column talks about the entry price point to, you know, for sort of a basic level room um, to get into the hotel. And obviously they go up from there. So if we look at, I'm gonna try and get us actually over to a picture of, um, of each of them. We'll start with Montage. So here's, um, this is just a quick view of what Montage looks like. Um, if you are there, you're very close to the Ritz, so they're, you know, pretty close together. They also have kitchens in every one of their, um, every one of their units because it was, I think, a condominium before that. I'm pretty sure, Lindsay, I don't know if you know better than me, but it was definitely something that they transitioned yeah. to a hotel. So they have mm -hmm. kitchens in every single room, which is great. No swim up bar plenty of pools, they do have a kids club and a spa. Um, and then if we were to look next to the Ritz Carlton, uh, I had clients actually stay at the Ritz last year. Um, you can see here, they have a beautiful three tiered pool, one major big pool. Uh, they have some suites with kitchens, uh, but primarily their rooms do not have kitchens in them. Uh, then we're gonna jump down to Wailea, which Lindsay's more familiar with. There's four big resorts that we send a lot of our clients mm -hmm. to, the Four Seasons, Andaz, Fairmont, and Grand Wailea. Uh, maybe we'll touch on two, uh, that there is a Relay and Chateau that isn't quite on the beach, uh, mm -hmm. but it's in Wailea. So if you're a couple that's going that you would prefer to have kind of that type of stay, then mm -hmm. that's also an option. This here is a picture of the Four Seasons. So it gives you a good overview of how it relates to the beach. A lot of these hotels have, and maybe Lindsay, you can tell us too, for the Andas, the hotel, then the pool, then the beach. And so it's usually a little bit of a walk down to get to beachfront. Absolutely. And are there any properties in Maui, Lindsay, that have sort of like toes in the sand as you walk out the room? I don't know. Are there? <sighs> Not really that I know of. Um, you know, certainly you do have oceanfront accommodations there, right. but because the beaches are public, um, you know, to kind of preserve that privacy factor, you really don't want to be directly on the right beach. On there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want that kind of space from where the other, the rest of the public is, you know, walking and all that kind of good stuff. So. Yeah, like for example, we have oceanfront villas on our property and you have a nice little grassy lawn area and then you go right down to the sand. 
Yeah. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the thing that stands out to me for the Four Seasons, um, number one, Four Seasons is one of the few resorts in the world that don't actually have a resort fee. So uh, they don't have a resort fee, plus their kids club is included. So if you're a family with kids, it's um, a great place to go. And obviously, you can see it's a beautiful resort. And then I brought in two pictures from the Andas. This is um, the beautiful lobby, which looks yeah. stunning. And maybe, Lindsay, do you want to sort of walk us through what are, what are your... I don't know, your highlights or favorite parts of the property. I mean, obviously the, the property is right in the heart of Wailea, um, but aesthetically it is just stunning. You can see that we have five pools to only 300 guest rooms, which is a big indicator of the overall experience that the guests are going to have on property. This is not that place where you are getting up at the crack of dawn to go rush out and put your book and a towel down on a lounge chair. Um, <laughs> you're never going to have a hard time kind of finding some real estate by the pool. Um, I think what's also really kind of unique about our property and the way that it's built is that we do really well with a wide variety of um, uh, different kind of guests, whether your families or, you know, the honeymooners that we're so well known with. Um, you kind of have the different parts of the different types of guests really segmenting themselves off into different areas of the resort. So for example, the kiddos are going to hang out down at that lagoon pool that you see there in that photo, whereas maybe your honeymooners are just by nature going to hang out um, up at the infinity edge pools. And then we also have an adults only area as well. Um, so everybody kind of finds their own little nook, which is incredible. And so, tell me, I know a lot of teams and lots of people have their own GoPros, but mm -hmm. you guys have some sort of a GoPro experience where you can borrow <laughs> components. Is that right? We sure do. So, you know, you had touched on the, the whole resort fee thing just a minute ago, which nobody's really stoked about a resort fee let's be honest um but you know what's always frustrating is oh they're going to charge a 40 dollar resort fee but it's got wire wi-fi and a newspaper um that's not the case with us um we actually found that it saves our guests a lot of money to have the resort fee because it's got so much packed in and and you know the gopro cameras use of those throughout your state is kind of one of those unique things um and then you can come up and use the gopro um editing software to get all your photos and your videos together so you have um, the folks back home to something to show but yeah that resort fee is pretty packed you've got outrigger excursions mixology sessions the kids club it's it's a lot I'm super excited because we're going to talk about experiences in a couple minutes, um, which is like my favorite part. All right, great. Well, that's a good overview. Thank you. And then um, oh, let me flip over to, I think the next one um, that's up is the Fairmont Kialani. Uh, and you can see from, uh, actually, I don't think you can see the little spreadsheet anymore, but the Fairmont is a very popular choice for families, I know. And Martha, I know you've sent quite a few families there. Maybe you can give us some insight into the to the Fairmont. Yeah, you know, what's really nice about the Fairmont, uh, one of the things is they have lots of rooms that are big rooms and two rooms with little wet bars and they can put, you can put a family of five or six people in one room with plenty of space, a bed for everyone and they allow that. So um, while having an absolutely beautiful grounds area uh, in the Wailea region and um, these um, good rooms, it becomes a really nice value and especially now because they are scheduled for a renovation and they've had to put it off a little bit so um their rates are a little bit better value than some of the other hotels in wailea so i think that makes it definitely worth a look and they have some of the best restaurants um in hawaii at that hotel so very well known so you have access to that as well so it's a okay. good choice Great. And, and I think you could essentially walk to and from, like you said, there was the beach walk, but a lot of mm -hmm. these places, if you just want to put on some comfortable shoes, you can just get around. Oh, absolutely. The Wailea Beach Walk is, I mean, not only one of the most beautiful places to take a walk or a jog, but it really does make all the different re resorts so accessible. Um, typically, you, you also have a complimentary shuttle that will run between all the resorts um, that helps you to get around as well. So very, very easy and convenient on that side of the island. There's um, Grand Wailea I see on the screen. <laughs> we oh, the, we oh, Grand the, Wailea. <laughs> the biggest for last. Um, Grand Wailea. Yeah. 
776 rooms. Uh, they don't have kitchens in any of their units. So you would think, oh, maybe it wouldn't appeal to people with children. But as you can mm -hmm. tell from the pool and that squiggly red and white thing that is actually a huge water slide, it is um, super attractive and appealing to people with kids. And oftentimes people say, it's kind of the Disney World of Maui. So if that's the experience that you're looking for, you're not necessarily looking for quiet solitude. Um, this might be the, the right place for you. I yes. think um, I have heard that people who stay nearby, if they have children and the children see the pool at the Grand Waialea, that that becomes something that they're going to be speaking to their parents about while they're there. Yes, don't mention this to your children if you're not going to take them there, because <laughs> right. you might uh, get your trip harangled by the kids. Um, it's it's definitely I think centered around that family experience. It's a beautiful property. You know, they did just um, undergo a renovation. The rooms are very sophisticated. Um, you know, I think it's a great property, but it is that hustle bustle kids running everywhere, you know, going on the water slides and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you might want to maintain your sanity and go stay in another resort sometimes and then go over there for the day or split up the trip a little bit. Yeah, that's a perfect example of, you know, <laughs> to have some insights from people like us is helpful when you're planning. Just so if you want to end up at a place like this, you do, but if you don't, then you don't. So, yes. um, Anyway, all right. Well, now we get a transition to experiences, which I don't know. I have a, I made this list and I have a longer list. So there's just so much to do on Maui and so many so things much. to see that, you know, it can't possibly all be done in one week vacation. It um, cannot. <laughs> you have to prioritize and maybe go back a few times. Um, if we were to sort of split it up between, my thought was between land, adventure, in the water, and then in the air. Perhaps, Lindsay, you want to give us a little bit of insight into some of your favorite places or experiences? I mean, hands down, and, and I'm sure this is not news to anybody, but the road to Hana is going to be kind of your, your number one as a new visitor um, to Maui. That's going to be your number one thing. You get up early in the morning, you pack a picnic lunch, and you go drive along this windy coastal road um, all day. And you are constantly stopping and looking at waterfalls or going on hikes through bamboo forests. Um, you might stop and pick up some banana bread from a local vendor there. Um, that is your way to see the island. Um, it can also be a little exhausting. <laughs> so be prepared for a very long day. Um, that's why I'm actually really excited to be representing Hana Maui Resort too, is offering guests an opportunity to stay on that side of the island so that you don't feel like, okay, I've reached the end of the road and now I have to turn all the way back and do it over again. Um, so there's a lot to do on that side of the island. I think that's probably one of the number ones. And I do have, um, so cliff jumping is a favorite thing of my family, having three oh, teenagers yes. and a husband. This happens to not be from Maui, but it was a picture of cliff jumping that I had, so I threw it in there. It's actually in Menorca. Um, but I think that that's one of the major, a, a big bonus of being up near Kapalua because there mm -hmm. are a couple of spots like this to, um, to jump off. We do some jumping in Hawaii, actually, on our road to Hana Day. So it's there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, there you are. can. You can go to the pools of Ohio. I think is what it, what it's called over there, and yes. incredible jumping. Yeah. Yeah, and there's some right on the east side, the west side, the north side. So there's no shortage of jumping off of big rocks in Hawaii or in Maui. <laughs> And then obviously snorkeling is a big deal. And this is one of the favorite spots to go um, to go snorkeling in the Molokini Crater. And I know that normally that's it. You can do that either um, on a catamaran. They even have people who will take you out on Zodiac boats. So there's a few different options. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lindsay mentioned this earlier, the, the Outrigger Canoe. That's a popular activity at a lot of the different resorts. Uh, let's see. I think I have maybe one other. Whale watching is really popular in the winter time. And when you're out on one of those snorkeling trips, you don't have to take a separate whale watching trip. Just like mm -hmm. the snorkeling trip to Molokini mm -hmm. can include whale watching because they're just out there. Well, and you can get a little bit closer than you bargained for sometimes. Um, <laughs> if you're out there on one of those outrigger boats, um, these whales come very close to shore. So, and they are curious. <laughs> they want to see you as much as you want to see them. So it can be, it can be just a, a magical, magical thing. 
Yeah. Well, I one, think you know, another cool thing, thing, Mimi. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say the great thing about Maui is, I mean, the categories of things, you know, water activities, wildlife, adventure, being active, sitting at a spa next to a pool, you know, sitting on a beach, like you can do as much or as little as you'd like all in the same place. Well, and that's why I think we we cater so well to those multi-gen families is because you have something for everyone, for all age groups. So, you know, grandma's not going to be sitting back at the hotel going, oh, gosh, what do I do? <laughs> so it's it's a really special place in that, right? And I think I'm going to put on my list going on, on a helicopter. I know, I know you you love the helicopter trip, Lindsay, because you were oh, recommending that the other day. That is a must. If your clients have it in the budget to go to do a helicopter, I personally love Maverick. Um, they've always been incredible to me. Um, you do the the uh, helicopter trip over to uh, Molokai. It is unbelievable. You see some of the highest waterfalls in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's also kind of a way to see one of the islands that most people do not get to actually go to. Um, so hands down, you know, run, don't walk. <laughs> and I don't know if Maverick's the one, but some of them will do it with the doors open. So if you are Ooh. slightly more adventurous, you can do that. <laughs> Hopefully they have you strapped in. <laughs> Yes, for sure. All right. Well, we get a we get a transition from the most exciting to the most important, maybe I guess. We well, have to get there and be allowed out of our hotel room. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to share this um, chart here. The um, Hawaii until October 15th had a 14 day quarantine requirement for anyone arriving on the island, but they have a safe travels program, which allows us to avoid that 14 day quarantine. It has three main components. One is having your COVID test taken and of course getting a negative result, hopefully prior to arrival. Um, then they have an online account system that everyone over age 18 must sign up for. It's called the Safe Travels account. And then when you arrive, you've got some online screening um, that's important. So um, things to know, please check back. Always, it changes. So I have the website there for you, hawaiicovid.com slash backslash travel. Um, the tests that you get must be from one of their trusted testing partners. There's a long list of them, um, but some are in only certain parts of the country. So just know CVS and Walgreens are on the list. So that's pretty much everywhere. I um, mean, it must be a nuclear amplified something test. And N-A-A-T. N-A-A-T. <laughs> yes. Um, and you have to have the test no more than 72 hours from the departure time of your last flight. So if you're connecting in Los Angeles, for instance, that departure time is the time for the flight to Hawaii that lands in Hawaii. That's the one that matters. It's for everyone five and over. They must have it and it is at your expense. Um, and then you create an online account and you upload your test results there. Um, and uh, let's see, once you um, complete that with your traveler details, then when you arrive, they'll have sent you a QR code, you show them that, your government ID, and they take your temperature and, and off you go. So um, that's kind of the gist of it. And I think it's really nice and simple. And it is seems to be a similar process to what we're seeing um, in many places around the world. This is obviously not international, but um, very protective of the health of their citizens. So it's similar mm -hmm. to what we're seeing elsewhere in the world. Absolutely. I mean, Maui is one of the, I can speak to Maui's numbers at least, but Hawaii overall, Maui specifically is one of the safest places you can go travel. I mean, I think we have a total of three cases right now. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's pretty incredible and we're trying to keep it that way. Okay, great. Well, we're closing in on 30 minutes, which we always try to stick around. So I'm going to start our wrap up with Lindsay. Give us maybe your top two or three tips for people, either that we talked about today or we haven't talked about yet, who are coming to Maui for the first time. Oh, there's so many things. I mean, obviously, the number one thing is just make sure you are um, up to date on the latest um, COVID requirements um, so that you don't have any, you know, travel issues there. 
Um, you want to check those websites as close to your travel as you possibly can. Um, but I mean, other than that, I also say you, you don't have to necessarily island hop if you don't want to. Um, there is more than enough to keep people busy. Um, there are things that I still haven't done on Maui and I've been traveling there for years. So there's more than enough to keep you busy on that one island too, if you don't want to um, worry about the inner island travel and stuff like that. Okay, great. Thank you. And I just want to add in or maybe ask Martha, I know the other day when you and I were talking, you gave a great piece of advice about when to plan some of those early morning excursions. Oh, yes. Almost yes. everyone that we're talking to is coming from the east. And so they're waking up very early when they're in Hawaii. And so the things is some of these adventures like the road to Hana, the um, sunrise at Haleakala, the top of the volcano, and then sometimes biking down. Do those things at the very beginning of your trip because you'll be awake anyway at 5 a.m. likely, or it'll be much easier to get up for those early morning pickups. Great advice. Absolutely. Don't wait till the last day when you're all used to the time change sleeping in and force yourself. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I know, Lindsay, I'm going to bring up one other one that you brought up the other mm -hmm. day, and that is about Costco. Uh, for people who are staying in places that have kitchens, uh, there is a mm -hmm. Costco near the airport. So when you yep. arrive, it's great to just stop, stock up on whatever important essentials you want and then mm -hmm. head to your hotel from there. Exactly. I think that's a great way to kind of save a little bit of money um, on the on the top end and, you know, have some things in your room for you. Um, so definitely a good way to kind of keep things a little bit more cost effective. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Mahalo. And uh, we'll see you again in two weeks on November 19th, where we will go to the other side of the planet and talk about how wonderful it is to go on safari and what's important when considering and planning a safari. So we're looking forward to that. And then uh, one, uh, next after that, we'll head to Mexico. So thank you all very much for joining us and we'll see you in two weeks. Mahalo everyone, thanks for having me. Mahalo. Thank you, Lindsay. Bye guys.